time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What My Line, brought to you by Remington Rand, makers of the world's number one electric shaver, the Remington. Now, let's all play What My Line. Now, let's see our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, an old friend, a charming comedian and bestseller writer, the book being Treadmill to Oblivion, Mr. Fred Allen. Thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. Not too old a friend, I hope. <laughs> and on my left, ladies and gentlemen, the only Hollywood glamour girl who has made one Tony last for five years out there, Miss <laughs> Janet Lee. Thank you. And on my left, the gentleman who has always been my idea of what a successful book publisher should look like, Mr. Bennett Sir. Thank you, Janet. I must tell you, Janet, that when I told my friends in Houston Thursday that you were going to be on the program tonight, they got so excited they started throwing oil wells all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> and that gentleman you see over to my left, that's not a mirage. That's our panel moderator. And he's particularly happy tonight because he and his wife, Kit, are celebrating their 18th wedding anniversary tonight. John Charles Davis. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Uh, we have a lovely, and I'm quite sure a most able new panelist with us tonight, so we've gone out of our way to see uh, if we can test her skills and Fred Allen's skills and Dorothy's and Bennett's with some very interesting occupations. We'll have a famous guest challenger a bit later on, too. But I think right now it's time for these experts to meet our first challenger whose line must be spotted. So would you sign in, please, ma'am? <coughs> Juliet, Juliet Stephan, is it? If it wasn't my 18th wedding anniversary, I'd say, don't we make a fine-looking couple? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me see, is it Miss or Mrs. Stephan? Mrs. Mrs. Stephan, right. where are you from? Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Well, that's, that's real nice. That, Counts for that wonderful tan you've got. Uh, wish I had it too. Thank you. Well, over there is the panel. They look somewhat formidable, but don't be concerned. They're real nice people, and they would like to get a better look at you. So, will you take a hike down there for me, please? Have you read my book? <laughs> <laughs> Just asking. I mean, uh... will you come over here, please, and sit down? And. Uh, as you may know, the panel gets one free guess as to what your line may be. And we'll begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think she teaches the mambo. Teaches the mambo, Mr. Allen. I was going to say that. Uh, Dorothy took it out of my mouth, and it's unsanitary to do a thing like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that uh, she was a mambo consultant, actually. Miss Lee? Uh, she models bathing suits. Mr. Sir? I think Juliet has all the Romeos in Fort Lauderdale running after her. This is probably for sure, but it's not the answer we were looking for, although you might have been interesting, some of you. We'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Mrs. Stephan. At the same time, we will tell them what her line is, but the panel will have to work it out. All right. Mrs. Stephan, do you know how we score this operation? Yes, I do. Fine, then I won't have to go through that. Sometimes I get letters saying, why don't you stop telling every time how you score this thing? So I won't do it this time, okay. all right? All right, Mrs. Stephan is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with um, Fred Allen. Uh, Miss Stephan, do you uh, deal in services? Yes, I do. In services, do you really? Yes. Uh, do you? Uh, <laughs> I, uh, do you? Uh, is there a product involved in what you do? Yes. Is uh, this a useful product? I yes. Hope. It is useful. Yes. Is it, uh, could you construe this uh, product as being uh, uh, decorative, too? Uh, <laughs> sometimes. It, it is decorative? Sometimes. Uh, sometimes. Is it uh, uh, about the size, of, is it uh, something that, uh, if I were in the mood, and uh, could I lift it up and hold it in my hand? Yes. <laughs> 
Is it something that could be used by both sexes? Yes. Is it conceivable that I, uh, sometime during my life, would uh, find the need of uh, uh, services of this nature? Could be. Could be. <laughs> uh, do you uh, pref do you have an office where you uh, you indulge in these services? Uh, uh, where this? Pro no. <laughs> <laughs> It's going so well, John, I confuse myself. <laughs> I, uh, you want to start that one all over again, Fred? No, I, uh, I generally don't get this far. And I, uh, <laughs> the altitude brought on a mental nosebleed there. And I get so high up in my... Well, tell me, uh, is this product something that might uh, be found in the home? Yes. Uh, would it be confined to uh, uh, one particular room in the home? Uh, yes and no. You have two yeah, rooms that's a very office. fair answer on Mrs. Stephan's part. Actually, I think what she is intimating there, Fred, is that to the degree that it's not in use, it might be confined to a general area in the home, whereas when it's in use, it uh, could, you know, be found elsewhere. Is that what you meant? John, I must caution you. The, uh, <laughs> the essence of, uh, of uh, comedy is, uh, is brevity and the plight of the midget. <laughs> And I'm further confused now, actually. Uh, is, is this something that's made of, uh, this product, is it something that's made of, uh, of metal? Yes. It has so you mean made in the, in the main of metal? We don't, we want to Made in any other state at all. If it's made of metal, it's... Oh, no. No, no! no! Don't ridicule. Maine is the only state with a bath, you know. It's the only... But, uh, <laughs> no, I, I mean, we want to be helpful. Do you mean, is the the thing basically made of metal rather yes. than is... Oh, no. basically. Thanks no. very much. That's no. one down. Nice no. to go, Miss Lee. I knew it. I would be undone. Is this product manufactured? Yes. Uh, is it made of cloth? Yes. Uh, is it... Does it come in contact with the body? Yes. Would it be wearing apparel of any kind? Uh, yes. Um, would you find this in a department store? Yes. Is it used? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> is it used for um, uh, a special event, kind of? No, no. No, I don't think you could say it was used for a special event. Two down at eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Stephan, did did I understand correctly that this could be worn by either sex? Yes, it can. The general category, yes. If it uh, was worn. Uh, by, let's say, somebody on this panel, would it be visible in public? No. <laughs> 3,007 no. to go, Ms. Gilgallon. Well, um, you mean it wouldn't be visible even if we were standing up? No. No, what actually we're doing there is we're presuming that Bennett means if this were worn by a member of the panel, would it be visible to the eye? No, it would not in itself be visible. It's, this is not to gainsay that there might be some manifestations of its presence, you know, but not necessarily the naked eye. And this is worn by both sexes? Can be, yes. Right? Can be. Mm -hmm. Is it usually worn more by one sex than another? That's right. And does it improve the appearance in some way? Sometimes. <laughs> It is generally considered to do so, yes. Well, is the wearer hopeful that it will improve the appearance? Yes. Uh, if I were wearing it, I would wear it under my dress. Is that right? Yes. Is it worn next to the skin? Yes. Um. <laughs> is it worn uh, in general around the middle of the body? Or partially around the middle? Uh, partially. Partially. Okay. Does it have any constricting force or <laughs> sometimes? <laughs> Would you buy it in a lingerie shop? Yes. Would you buy it from a corset chair? Yes. Is it something in the uh, undergarment, uh, but usually with elastic or elastic <laughs> family? Yes. Would it be called a girdle? Yes. yes, that's the product. Yes. That's very good. Now, wait a minute. Yes. Wait a minute. We may trip you up yet. What is Mrs. I Stephan? realize this is not the end. Yeah, what is... Well, she works in an oh, office. Please. What was Make that? Oh, shoot. 
<laughs> what did Mrs. Stephan have to do with it? Well, she said she worked in an office. No, it was asked if she worked in an office. The question was withdrawn, as a matter of fact, oh, and I no see. answer given. Well, uh, do you have something to do with the girdle after it is manufactured? Yes. Do you sell it? Sell girdles? No. That's four down and six ah. to go, Mr. Allen. Uh, do you model girdles? That's yes. right. Oh, yes. That's why when you said model bathing suits, Miss Lee, I thought you were going to go running wild when we got to you, but you didn't, thank you. Can I say something? You sure may. I don't know if Miss Lee remembers, but I met her, or I didn't meet her, but I saw her getting on the train in Chicago and getting off here in New York. Oh, hi. <laughs> and just Welcome. goes to show, small world, thank small you. world, always making aphorisms. Well, we hope you enjoyed your visit with us. It I was very nice did. having you. Thank you very nice much. Nice for you to come to What's My Life, didn't it? Panel, let's see what you can do with the second challenger. Would you sign in, please, sir? Victor. Victor Jackson, right, sir? Uh, where are you from, sir? Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Well, now, we just had somebody from Florida. We got somebody from California. There hasn't been a war around here. This is wonderful. <laughs> Would you let the uh, panel... Get a closer look at you and take a walk down in front of the panel for me. Thank you. How do you do? Thank you. A little smog on you. I just. That's all from the Rose Bowl, I guess. Would you come over here with that smog and, and sit down next to me, please? All right. Now, Mr. Jackson, as you probably know, the panel gets one free guess as to what your line may be. We'll begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think he's a, a tree sprayer. A tree sprayer, Mr. Allen. I think Mr. Jackson is Carl Sandberg's barber. <laughs> Miss Lee. I think he has something to do with law. With law, Mr. Sir. I think possibly Mr. Jackson looks after the budget on Miss Lee's motion picture. <laughs> no, um, nobody has it. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mr. Victor Jackson. At the same time, we'll tell them what his line is, but the panel's got the name. Jackson, you know how we score this operation, do you? Do, That's Bradley. fine. I don't have to give the explanation tonight, I don't think. Mr. Jackson is salaried, and uh, let's begin the general questioning with Bennett Cerf. Mr. Jackson, you're a gentleman of great dignity, dignity if I may say so, and I would warrant a guess that uh, you're a college man. Are you a college graduate? No. One down, and now you know. Mr. Do you uh, work for a profit-making organization? Yes. Right. Uh, would you say you were a white-collar man? Yes. Not at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a blue shirt on. Gray shirt, I guess. It's white for the smog here. Uh. <laughs> Do you work indoors more than outdoors? Uh, which one is the answer? Yeah. Yes. Do you work indoors rather than outdoors? Yes. Uh, do you ever work behind a desk or a counter? No. That's Fred? two down You're and on. eight to go, Mr. Allen. Well, do you deal in uh, services of any nature? Yes. Do you, uh, do you, you live in, do you work in Los Angeles and live in Los Angeles? Yes. You work in Los Angeles. Are you, uh, what you do, does it require any special training or skill? Yes. Do you, uh, is it uh, something that you'd be concerned with motion pictures? No. This, no, uh, this is not concerned he, with he motion pictures. He says that as though he's... Beg pardon, Fred? I, I, he's, he's proud of not being in motion pictures. <laughs> no. <laughs> <Lee here. laughs> it, just, it doesn't happen that uh, uh, Mr. Jackson's work is directly connected with motion pictures. Three down and seven to go, Miss Lee. May I ask something? Yes, surely. Sure. Conference? Uh, yes. Conference. Pardon. Um, I had to ask, did we find out if he was, uh, You've got to uh, speak up in the conference, because I have to hear what's said. Oh, uh, did we Top find line. out if there was a product connected with, yes. with the service? Uh, oh, did we? No. No, no we, we didn't. didn't. Go ahead. Uh, is there a product connected with your service? Is, well, is there a product connected with your services? Product, yes. Uh, is this product found in the home? Yes. Uh, is it found, um, in any particular room of the home? Yes. Usually, yes. Yes. Um, would that room be the living room? Yes. 
Good bit. Um, I mean, uh, is the product ma manufactured? Is it what? Is the product manufactured? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, do both men and women use it? Yes. Is it is it something uh, um, movable, uh, as opposed to something that uh, like a, a sofa? If you sit it, it usually kind of stays. You mean in this context, is it movable in the context of something light enough to pick up and move around easily? Yes. It can mm -hmm. be moved. That's fine. It can be, but in that context, the answer would be no. Four down and six oh. to go, Mr. Sir. <laughs> Well, Mr. Jackson, is this uh, object uh, ever used for either uh, entertainment purposes or improving the conditions in the room in which it yes, stands? Yes, yes, could be. Or which one? <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell him. Now, I'm sorry, uh, would this be used for any kind of entertainment purposes? Yes. Uh, do any kind of sounds come out of it? Yes. Uh, do any kind of pictures ever shown no. on it? No, that's fine. Only five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, is it either a radio or a phonograph? I beg your pardon? Is it either a radio or a phonograph? A radio or a phonograph? No. no. That's six down and four to go, Mr. Allen. That it's used for entertaining purposes? Mm -hmm. it, yes. Well, there are so many uh, uh, things available to entertain people in Los Angeles. This could almost be anything. <laughs> could almost be a uh, metallic mel uh, relative, actually. <laughs> is, it, uh, is it something that's uh, uh, mechanically operated? No. It isn't, huh? It's uh, seven down and three to go, Miss Lee. There is... There is, uh, in some rare occasion, I believe, a record that this has been mechanically operated, but the basic uh, product itself is usually not mechanically operated. Miss Lee. Did we establish... Uh, I, I may we have a conference? You may conference, have ten conference. seconds for a conference. I'm going to give you one more minute. Did sounds came out yes. of this? Yes. yes. Did we establish the size of it in any way? Well, it no, it can't, it can't be carried around, around easily. Around. No. It can be pushed around, I gather. Oh. Oh. All right, the ten seconds are up. Miss Lee. Um, is this... Uh, decorative? Mm, in a sense. It is. Uh, in a be... sense, wouldn't you say, Mr. Jackson? Is it, is it decorative? Yes. Is it uh, in the living room? Is it in sight or is it... Uh, is it in sight? Is it normally yes. in sight? Yes. Um, I have to think. Oh, I pass. Good. All right, Mr. Sir. 30 uh, does seconds. This, does this machine, Mr. Jackson, uh, reproduce something? Not of its no. No, it doesn't reproduce. I mean, no, it's, it's like not. a typewriter or something of this sort. No, it's not a typewriter. Things. That's eight down and two to go, Miss Dorothy. Is it a musical instrument of any kind? Yes. Is it a mu musical instrument that's played by a person? Yes. Uh, is it uh, something other than a piano? No. <laughs> <laughs> Cards, it's a piano. Now, actually, Mr. Jackson is a piano tuner, and currently he is the gentleman who tunes Liberace's piano. Oh, All of his pianos. Yeah. The there you get the whole card. There you go. John, 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 before Mr. Jackson leaves, couldn't we see his team? <laughs> <laughs> now, in just think... a moment, we'll meet tonight's mystery. Now, we come to the special feature of our program the appearance of our mystery celebrity. My friends in the panel have blindfolds for this part of the program. Are they all in place, panel? Yes, yes sir. Daddy. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? <laughs> all right, panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challengers, we uh, get right down to the general question. You all ready to play? Good. Take off your mask. Huh? <laughs> Our guest is Tony Curtis, and unhappily, we were going to play some big jokes on you tonight, and Tony was to be our mystery guest, but uh, somebody found out about it, and it was in a paper in the Midwest, so Tony was nice enough to say he didn't feel it would be fair to play, but he wanted to come and say hello anyway. All right. So, Tony, thanks very much for coming up to see us. What brick you. brings you and your lovely... Hey, she's doing great. Did you notice? Yeah. Doing wonderfully. wonderfully yeah. Thank you. What brought you all to New York? Well, this is kind of a vacation and also a little work. I'm uh, on my way to Boston for the opening of my latest picture, Six Bridges to Cross. Oh, and you. that'll be opened in Boston uh, January 19th, isn't it, dear? Yes. Next about week. Brink, Good thing you had your wife. Pardon me? You? It's about the Brink murder case. Yes, it's uh, the uh, Brink's robbery. Well, we're not supposed to really say that, but it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say it. Back. Strike that from the record. Yeah. <laughs> it's about the Brink's uh, 
robbery in Boston. Do you I bring the money back the... in the picture? Pardon me, sir? Do you bring the money back in the picture? <laughs> <laughs> well, Tony, thanks a lot for coming Thank to you see you. us. You got a bridge to cross. Will you say hello to your bride and the other folks? Good to see you. Now we come to another special feature on tonight's show, the appearance of a second mystery celebrity. My friends on the panel, please get your masks back on right away as quickly as you can get them on. Let me know when the blindfolds are all in place. We have only this about two minutes the money, to play, I and I want to see if you can identify these. Bennett? Ja Janet. Come on, get them on. Bennett. Janet, you were never married before, were you? All set? <laughs> all right, well, our second Very mystery different. challenger, come out and sign in, please. All right, panel, now you have a little over three minutes to see if you can guess our second mystery guest. Uh, let's see, uh, let's begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you in some form of entertainment? Yes. Uh, have you uh, ever been in the motion pictures? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. Have you been in uh, television? No. Two down and eight to go, Where Ms. Where have Lee. you been working? <laughs> <laughs> Currently. <laughs> Uh, have you been on a Broadway stage? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Well, have you been in radio? No. Four down. Good down Lord. Oh, Mr. <laughs> Are you a sporty type fellow? Yes. Uh, athlete. That's yes. why you're not bothering to disguise your voice. Uh, are you, um, are you part of a game which, um, is played out of doors and indoors? Yes. Um, is it uh, something that two people can play and four people can play? Yes. Is it tennis? Yes. Oh. Oh. Would you say oh. something else? Say something else. Yes. Are you? Say something else. Um, do you have, uh, are you, besides being a player in an executive capacity? Yes. Are you American? Yes. Are you Billy Talbert? Well, yeah. I'm... Uh, that's wonderful. That's very good indeed. I thought we'd give him a lot more trouble. Too bad that man in the Middle West didn't guess Billy and we could have a third one. <laughs> <laughs> well, Billy Talbert, I'm... I don't think I have to tell you because I think you know the whole country is ragingly proud of what you and your good colleagues did in Australia, bringing the Davis Cup back to these Thank parts. You, and uh, I know that... Uh, I think it's... Just... <laughs> and it is true, I think, in almost every human endeavor, the man who is the tactician and strategist has a very great deal to do with who comes back with the bacon. And as you all know, Bill Talbot was the non-playing captain of our team, and he's the man who set down the strategy and the tactics that brought home the bacon for us. So I want to say thanks and say how proud I am to get a chance to shake your hand so soon after you got home. Thank you, Good John. to see you, sir. I'd like to say that uh, Vic and Tony did quite a job down there and deserve a great deal of credit. Oh, they did that. They played wonderful tennis. You all three can... Are they going to keep it next year? Certainly going to try. <laughs> Fine, Bill. Will you go over and say hello to the panel and, and thanks very much for being our guest. Quickly, I want to remind... What'd you say, Fred? I think it's uh, wonderful after all of the flying saucers we have the cup here back in this country. <laughs> I was going to try to be serious for a minute, but I don't think I'll try. That was Fred's hotter than 17 pistols tonight. So I just say it's been wonderful having Billy Talbot with us, and uh, I know the panel joins me in that. We'll be back in just... Janet, may I say that you played the game wonderfully tonight, and I think thank Arlene you. Francis will be back next week. Uh, we'll really feel that she has been very well represented. Oh, thank you, Uncle. Now, until Daddy's next over. week, this is John Daly saying good night, Dorothy. Good night, Fred. Uh, thank you, Dorothy. Good night. And you and I better have our own panel now, <laughs> Janet, from now on. <laughs> thank you, Fred. Good, good night. Good night, Janet. What a palpable pass. Good night, Arlene. <laughs> good night, John. And good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Life? <laughs> Thank you.
transportation to Mr. Jackson was arranged through American Airlines, the country's leading airline now serving the United States, Mexico, and Canada. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network.